So here's the completed build guys. And what do you think? I think it's come out not too bad. So yes, this is about a £250 gaming PC that I put together. And I think I've done not a too bad job, if I do say so myself. <laughs> So let's just have a quick chat. We'll just talk about the case and then we'll just talk about the components that we use. And then I'll, I'll put those benchmarks up for you guys. So let's get into it. Overall, the case was actually quite nice. And like I say, I'll put, I'll put the B-roll up of the fans just so you can see them again. I do think the fans look really good, actually. I do think the fans look really good. Um, the RGB looks really great. And it has synced in with the motherboard, which is really great. So the motherboard software is actually controlling all the fans, which is really good. It just plugs in with that one a ARGB 5-volt uh, three-pin header on, on the motherboard, which we have here. And overall, the build was quite easy in this case. This is the Ions KZ05V2. And the cable management, although I put the, the rear on there, I put the uh, rear panel on. Cable management wasn't the best, I'll be honest. Um, there were parts where I did struggle a little bit at, at times to kind of get everything in there. But it has, you know, the, the back panel has gone on, the, the rear panel has gone on. So we're okay there. I did think at points the, um, the cable management isn't fantastic and... Thankfully, it does have that main cable channel because that's the main channel which you just have to stuff all your cables in because otherwise there just isn't enough room behind the motherboard tray there. And I would have liked to see at least another centimetre, I, I would say, just to give a little bit easier for the build. But overall, for £45, this is actually a really great case and it looks great. It's got all the modern features and it doesn't look, it doesn't look cheap, does it? it? It looks actually quite a premium case, in, in my opinion, anyway. It looks quite premium, so... That's, that's, that's a really good thing, and I, I really like this case, and yeah, I, I'd say generally overall good, although just be aware the cable management isn't the absolute best on here, but it's it's fine, it's doable, it's, it's workable. So let's talk about the actual build itself. Um, this is, like I said, about £250, and it's on a, a Ryzen system, basically. So we're using the Ryzen 5 2600 6-core 12 thread CPU. So that's actually a really nice CPU. A um, little bit dated now. Maybe not going to quite get absolutely 100% out of our GPU because of that. But it's more than good enough and will do for a budget build. And that's housed on a ASRock B450 Pro 4 motherboard. This is a motherboard that I've actually had a little while here. So it's got it, I've got it for a little bit cheaper in that, in that sense because I've had it for a while. Um, but it, it is a really nice board and it comes with all the nice features, even a ARGB uh, header, so that's actually nice. Um, two M.2 slots, although I'm not using any M.2 drives, but the two slots are there. Um, everything's fine with this board and, and it's, a, it's a great little board. And yeah, it's, it's really reliable and ASRock do make good boards, so yeah, happy with that. And then 16 gigabytes of uh, DDR4 memory, clocked at 3200 megahertz, a 2x8 gigabyte kit. This is actually a really lovely kit. Um, you know, it's, it's the Corsair Vengeance LPX, obviously, because we're budget here, so we have to go budget RAM. But again, it's really reliable RAM, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. I, I buy this RAM all the time, and it just works, so that's all we need. Uh, for our SSD, we have a 1 terabyte, well... It's actually about 900 gigabytes or so, but we call it one terabyte just to make it sound better. <laughs> but yeah, uh, one terabyte A-Data SSD, 2.5-inch drive. It, get, it gets the job done. It's not it's not an amazing drive. It's only a, a cheap A-Data one. I think it's like the A400 or something like that. I can't remember now. But it will get the job done, and that's the main thing. We've got one terabyte uh, of storage in this, in, in this PC, so that's great. Then for the power supply, we have the MSI MAG A550BN power supply, which is a 550 watt power supply, more than enough for our graphics card. So pretty much fine there. It's all housed in, like I said, the IONS KZ05V2, which I've talked about that case. And I think it is a solid case and a nice ATX case if you're looking for a flip case. And then we have the star of the show, which is this pallet. GTX 1070 Ti, and it's the Jetstream version. Actually really nice that it does actually illuminate here, the, the palette actual, um, where it says palette there, actually uh, actually lights up, which is actually really nice. I didn't actually know that. So that's actually a really nice feature. And for 1080p, 
sort of medium to high settings. This is going to be more than enough for more or less every single game. There are one or two games that you're going to have to turn down the settings, but overall, this is really good. And that kind of leads me nicely onto the benchmark. So we've kind of taken this from the previous video of our 1070 Ti in 2024. So if you have watched that video already, then you can skip over the benchmarks. But I'm going to just include that same video, just the uh, benchmark part, into the end of this. Because obviously doing the benchmarks twice just seems stupid to me. And I'm just doubling my work. So... I'll just put that at the end here. So our first game up for the 1070 Ti is Fortnite 1080p full screen, unlimited frame rate, and we have put the quality preset to low. And those are all the settings. So here we go, we've landed, let's start the benchmarking. And we're sitting around about 200 frames a second there. So Pretty, pretty decent here from the 1070 Ti. This is 1080p low. Uh, I don't know where I'm going. So it is dropping here and there. I mean, we have got 16 on the 0.1% um, low. Oh, hello. And there we go. Um, and a 1% low of 40. So we are getting those drops there. And we're going to get attacked. So we've got to get out of here. And it's about 160 odd there. So over our 144 hertz, sort of uh, what, what we're looking for. Um, 61 degrees on the uh, GPU and about 50 or so percent utilization, which isn't great, but maybe our CPU is holding us back a tiny bit, but it shouldn't be too bad. We are using the Ryzen 5 2600 with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz. So yeah, overall, yeah, that is it's looking pretty good with Fortnite. I have to say the 1080p low is looking quite good. Um, we could probably go up to medium here, um, if we've got enough room, yeah, I think we'll just quickly go up to medium, uh, hopefully we stay alive for that time, uh, quality preset, medium, apply, so about 120 odd there for the frames per second, so 1080p medium looking good as well, um, certainly playable, if you did want that uh, 144 hertz experience, obviously you would have to go 1080p low with the 1070 Ti. But this is a good performance from an older graphics card. I mean, you've got to remember this is an eight-year-old graphics card now, so this is a good showing so far. There are some drops here and there, but this could be to do with lag or our system. I think the graphics card is certainly holding up fine. And generally, the frame time graph is quite good and it's quite steady. So that's also a good sign as well. Our utilisation in our GPU is just starting to come up a little bit, so that's, that's a good sign as well. Getting towards the 90s now. So that's that's good. Uh, the temperatures are sitting really good, around about 60 or so degrees centigrade or degrees uh, Celsius on the um, GPU. So that's great. Obviously our uh, Ryzen 5 2600 isn't being pushed here, so that's only about 50 degrees. We do have the 0.1% and the 1% low. Very, very big drops here, as you can see there. Four, four frames per second and three frames per second is, is very poor. Now, where did that other guy go? Can we get him? No. Nope. Oh, we got him. Ha! <laughs> we did get him. How did he not get us? Jeez. Craziness. Our system's also pretty quiet as well, so that's sort of obviously a bonus as well. It's got a massive, massive heat sink, heat sink on the uh, GPU, so we should all be good there. And, and the temperatures are looking fine, so I'm happy with everything so far. Oh, another one. So that was Fortnite, 1080p, uh, low and then medium. So both are perfectly fine. Could even maybe go up to high, but I probably would just say 1080p medium for the 1070 Ti. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider now, 1080p full screen, and our graphics preset is set to medium. We will also try high afterwards, but let's go for medium now. And those are all the settings. So 1080p medium here, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and we're sitting about 113, 114 FPS there. So... That's pretty good, 99% usage on our GPU, which is also great. 63 degrees uh, Celsius, so that's obviously good as well. Um, yeah, and the frame time is really, really steady as well. The frame time graph is really steady, so that's really good showing. Um, over 100 FPS on 1080p medium. So I think we will probably try 1080p high as well, but we'll see what the 1080p medium results are in a bit. 
So 1080p medium Shadow of the Tomb Raider was an average of 111, a minimum of 84 and a maximum of 181. So let's try 1080p high now. So 1080p high now Shadow of the Tomb Raider and we're sitting around about 110 FPS again. So it hasn't really gone down much from where it was before. 99% usage on our GPU again and we're sitting about 60 degrees centigrade there. Or Celsius. I'm still not sure which one it is. I think it's Celsius, isn't it? Yeah, that's the that's the new one. Anyway, the frame time looking really good there as well. And yeah, so looks like 1080p high is good as well. So let's see what those results are. So 1080p high, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, an average of 108, a minimum of 81, and a maximum of 176. So 1080p high, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, easily playable in a 1070 Ti. So here we go, Cyberpunk 2077, and we have 1080p full screen, graphics preset, we'll, we'll put it to medium I think, and then we'll just see what that can do. So here we go, Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p medium, and we're sitting about 75 FPS there, so pretty decent, our frame time is looking pretty steady as well. About 98% usage on our GPU, so that's great, and only about 63 degrees Celsius on our... Uh, GPU so looking pretty good let's uh, let's see what the scores are here and then let's have a go at 1080p higher uh, hey guys so 1080p medium an average of 84 a minimum of 66 and a maximum of 104 so easily above our 60 FPS playable uh, experience there so let's change the settings and let's go up to high so 1080p high here Cyberpunk 2077 and it's 60 FPS what we have so that's really really impressive actually from an eight-year-old graphics card to be getting 1080p high 60 FPS round about that that's really quite impressive in my book and this is a strong graphics card still even in 2024 I think if you are looking at budget PCs and certainly flipping budget PCs I do think the 1070 Ti is a great shell and it's also quite a rare card to see on the market nowadays, so there's also that factor as well. So 1080p high, an average of 71, a minimum of 57, and, and a maximum of 88. So we have dropped a little bit below the 60 FPS there on our minimum, but the average is still higher than 60 FPS that we're looking for. So more than a pass, I think, uh, for 1080p high on Cyberpunk 2077 with the 1070 Ti. Starfield and let's have a look at the settings so we're at 1080p medium here so let's try medium and see what happens so sitting obviously below our 60 fps that we're looking for at about 45 fps so not great but again this is Starfield this this is what happens with it we are probably a little bit CPU bottlenecked here with the Ryzen 5 2600 but potentially if you had a little bit bit uh, stronger CPU, you might be able to get a little bit more frame rate on, the, on the, in this game as well. We are locked at 99% usage on the GPU, so we, we are, you know, stressing out our graphics card as much as we can. But again, this is really more of the game rather than anything. As you could, as you could see, Cyberpunk was doing really, really well. I didn't even know you could do that. I just, I just uh, realised that you could switch to third person. <laughs> In Starfield, I didn't even know that. Oh well. <laughs> anyway, learn something new. So, um, yeah, about 50. Well, getting towards 45, I'd say actually for the FPS there. But let's uh, stop the benchmarking and then let's go into our display test settings. Graphics preset is set to high. We do have the FSR free on here as well, just so you know. So let's uh, bring that up and then start the benchmarking again. So we have dropped quite a lot here into, into the 30s here. But if you did want a 30 FPS experience at 1080p high, you could do it with a 1070 Ti. So it is possible. I think for most people, I mean, they could you could turn it down to low as well. But um, I think for most people, they just stick at medium. That, that's about 45. So that'd probably be enough, really. Um, there is a few too many drops here below the 30 FPS as well, as you can see about 26 or so on the 0.1% low there, and 1% low of 27, so again, again, this is Starfield, which is not particularly um, 
great on systems anyway, especially on older hardware. It's not it's not good at all. But anyway, I think that's kind of uh, that kind of will wrap it up for the 1070 Ti. Um, a legendary graphics card. Not many of them are sort of so available now. I mean, I didn't even know about the 1070 Ti until about six months ago or so. So to actually come across one is actually quite amazing, and I'm quite happy about that. Because uh, I only thought there was the 1070, I didn't even realise there was a 1070 Ti. Yeah, overall, do think this build's come out good. Uh, we're hopefully going to sell it for £375. I think I've actually got someone lined up, actually, to buy this straight away. So that's obviously a really good plus as well. Uh, a nice £125 profit, so we should be all good there. And overall, I think the build's come out good. So please like if you please drop a like if you like the video. Please drop a comment on what you think of my little build, and please subscribe to see my future videos. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.